historical misconceptions you probably still believe. In this video, I'm going to be exposing the truth about history and opening your mind to a new reality. Once you know the truth, you will be able to impress your friends and family with your new knowledge. So let's get started. Oh, keep out your pen and paper because this is going to be rapid fire knowledge. Knowledge. Basically the whole video. So when referring to the timeline of human existence, we know that BC means before Christ, right? And AD means after death, right? Well, actually no. That's only 50% true. Many people mistakenly believe that AD stands for after death, but it actually stands for Anno Domini, which is Latin for in the year of the Lord. I probably butchered that Latin and I'm sure you guys will comment about it. But yeah, BC does in fact stand for before Christ, but AD doesn't stand for after death. Next up, you might have heard that Singapore can put you in jail for chewing gum. Once again, that's not necessarily fully true. Since 1992, Singapore has enforced strict regulations on chewing gum, specifically making it illegal to import and sell. However, despite rumors suggesting otherwise, chewing gum does not lead to any sort of jail time. However, carrying large quantities and disposing of it improperly can result in a hefty fine. And by hefty, I mean $1,000. The reason why this ban was even put in place is kind of interesting and it basically just stems from the government being so fed up with people putting gum in really weird places. Specifically, vandals shoving it into key locks, mailboxes, elevator buttons, and other strange places that would cause issues. There is also more normal places like bus seats and under tables and other normal places you would find gum, unfortunately. So yeah, Singapore, don't chew your gum there. And if you do, keep a thousand bucks in your pocket. You might need it. But it's better than jail. Trust me, bro. Next up, we all know that Walt Disney was cryogenically frozen, right? Well, despite rumors, he wasn't at all. He was actually cremated and his ashes were spread across the Forest Lawn Moral Park in Glendale, California. I honestly have no idea where this came from and I definitely remember hearing this growing up, but it's interesting to know that it's not true at all and actually the opposite is true. So yeah, if you are for some reason excited to see a thought out Walt Disney, don't get your hopes up. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a very simple question. How long was the 100 year war? Was it A, 10 years, B, 100 years, C, 200 years, or D, 116 years? The answer may shock you. It is 116 years. That is right. The 100 year war was actually more than 100 years, which I guess kind of makes sense. But why this is a misconception is because a lot of people automatically believe that the 100 year war was exactly 100 years, which it wasn't. By a lot of people, I mean me, and I'm hoping that I'm not the only one. Now, talking about something extremely fun, the Black Plague. What little creature was the most significant method of transmission for this awful disease? Well, rats, right? Not exactly. We all know during the time of the Black Plague, rats played a significant role, and that is true, but they were not the most significant vector of transmission. No. Also, for context, why the rats were so dangerous is because they were carrying fleas which were carrying the bubonic plague. So if these flea-carrying rats weren't the most significant way that people got sick, what was? Well, it was still fleas, but it wasn't rat fleas. It was human fleas. Lice and human fleas were way more significant in getting people sick, and I guess that makes sense because consider how many rats you meet on a daily basis versus how many people you meet. Big difference, especially when you're in an extremely crowded city setting. So I think we all owe rats a big apology for blaming them for the bubonic plague, but not too much of an apology because they still killed a lot of people via flea transmission. Let's talk about politics again. The fall of the Berlin Wall ended division in Germany, right? Like, as soon as the wall came down, everything was better, right? No. While the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 was a symbolic moment marking the ending the Cold War division of Germany, the process of reunification was complex and took several years to complete. Social, economic, and political challenges persisted long after the wall came down. The way I look at it was that the fall of the wall was the beginning beginning of change, not the end of it. It was definitely a catalyst and a step in the right direction, but it wasn't a magical solution that saved everything, at least not initially. We all know how things ended up playing out. I feel like this one is more or less self-explanatory and pretty obvious if you think critically about the situation, but I think for the most part, a lot of people just assume that, oh, as soon as the wall came down, that's when everything got better. It was instantly great, but if you look at it, like, no, if you're unifying two opposite and separate parties, it's going to take some time for them to acclimate to each other. But eventually we took the west side and the east side and we brought them together and they kissed and they lived happily ever after. Okay, so I'm assuming most of you remember 2012, specifically the fact that it was supposed to be the end of the world according to the Mayan calendar. And we all know that the Mayan calendar specifically stated that in 2012, the world will end, right? If you've been following along, anytime I ask you a leading question, it's wrong. And this is no exception. That is absolutely not the case. This entire situation is more or less based off of misinterpretations. And obviously we have no firsthand accounts to get the true scoop on what this really meant. So, so this is what we have. While some interpretations of the Mayan 
Mayan calendar suggested that a significant cycle would end in 2012, there's no actual evidence to support the idea that the Mayans predicted the end of the world on this date. The 2012 phenomenon was largely modern interpretations that were based on no historical beliefs. And it could even just be as simple as the fact that the Mayans didn't make the calendar go beyond 2012 for whatever reason. That part is unknown. But what is known is that they were never specifically saying 2012 the world will end. That's simply a misconception. A historical misconception. Speaking of which, we all know that Cleopatra and Julius Caesar banged. We talked about it in my last video. If you haven't seen it, watch it after this one. But what I didn't mention in that video, which I didn't even know at the time, which is kind of embarrassing to admit, is that Cleopatra is not of Egyptian descent. She's actually of Greek descent. I feel like this is more or less commonly known, but I wanted to add it because I didn't know it, so I wanted to save somebody else from being embarrassed as well. Oh, and Cleopatra ruled Egypt, but not ancient Egypt. This is another thing that I'm sure a lot of people know, but I feel like it's worth saying. Cleopatra actually lived closer to the eye phone than she did to the construction of the pyramids. So let that sink in. No, like I seriously mean it. Like if you could get the door, that'd be great. This guy's been standing there for like five minutes. Anyways, we all know that George Washington had wooden teeth, right? Of course not. Don't get me wrong. He had some messed up chompers and they were made out of some weird stuff, but they were not just wood. I'm pretty sure like one of his initial pairs of dentures had wood in them, but the later versions were nothing of the sort. George Washington notoriously had dental issues from his early 20s and it's believed that his speeches were notoriously short because of his dental issues and his teeth also affected the shape of his face over his life. His dentures are on display to this day and consist of a menagerie of gold, lead, human teeth, and even ivory. This guy had the most insane set of grills like 300 years before it was even cool. But yeah, they weren't just wood. I'm gonna tell a personal story. My dad has like bad teeth, like fake teeth. He has a lot of fake teeth, like dentures. And one time they broke. I think he sat on them or something. He asked me to go get glue to fix them. I was a kid. I didn't know what I was doing. So I went and I got wood glue and he was mad that I got wood glue, but he still used it. And he fixed fixed his teeth and I think to this day he still uses dentures that are held together with wood glue so yeah I don't know that's just I don't know that's just I wanted to share a personal story okay back to the video staying on the topic of the olden days most men wore wigs in the colonial era right like you see in all the paintings like everyone was doing it right no in colonial times wearing wigs was a status symbol signifying wealth and prestige only about five percent of the population could even afford them mainly lawyers statesmen and affluent women wigs were costly and inaccessible to the average person akin to luxury items like a Rolex watch or a Versace handbag. Nowadays, wigs are readily available. Anyone can get one. But in the 1700s, somebody with a wig, they were ballin'. Like Mr. Ballin level ballin'. Like if Mr. Ballin and Alec Baldwin were playing basketball and they were balling and they were going band for band and they were showing how much they were ballin'. So was everybody just rocking wigs in the colonial time? No. Was all the rich people in colonial times rocking wigs? Yes. Is this a misconception? I'll let you decide. And with that, I want to say a brief thank you. If you're watching this video shortly after upload, we are either extremely close or we have just hit 100,000 subscribers. And if you're watching this in the future, maybe we have a million. Who knows? Regardless, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your guys' continued support. It means so much. I honestly had no intentions of starting a YouTube channel when I got the idea for this channel, but I thought, hey, why not? Let's give it a try. And the last five months have been honestly amazing. I've wanted to be a YouTuber since a kid and I've had multiple failed channels. So to have something that actually has taken off and performed well is amazing. Like I said, we've only been around for just over five months and I'm so excited to see what the next five years looks like for the channel. Thank you guys so much for subscribing and just being all around awesome and being a part of the bro community, I guess. I know this video is a bit shorter than usual, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it and found it fun. The next video we're cooking up is going to be really interesting. So stick around for that. Like always, trust me, bro.